we know how frustrating all this shit is, like, honestly, really. I have to go through all of this bullshit. Like, I don't know what to say. Alright, you got me to spark. That's all that fucking matters. Did it send- did it, did it actually send my- Nope, I don't want to do that. Fuck you. Alright, well there we I don't know what to say anymore. I took the dark walk where Mallory slept for a while. The coughing had kept her and me awake, but I'd rub her back till we both drifted off. Thankfully, she was sleeping peacefully now, getting the rest she needed. Worry she, worry made my stomach feel sick and my chest feel hollow. There's no way I'm getting back to sleep now. Pace back and forth from it, dragging my hands across my face. I needed a distraction, something to shut my brain, shut down my brain, or at least get rid of this nervous energy. Shake my head. I went to my desk and dropped it into my chair. Computers were usually pretty distracting. I turned on the the monitor, pulled my keyboard out. It was a membrane keyboard, so I didn't have to worry about making too much noise with typing. None of mine are like that. There are more emails waiting in my inbox. One of them was from a colleague who worked at a Vietnam. The time difference was 
and then it was late in the afternoon over there, so she was probably wrapping up the workday as I sat there in the darkest hour of night. Subject red line, remedy distribution underway. Just hearing that made my blood boil. I'm so sick of these empty promises, but what? Fuck it, read it. I opened the mail anyway, thinking I'm, maybe I could find whoever started this vile Forgan chain and send them a piece of my mind. But then curiosity was peaked. The body in the email had surprisingly official looking Global Health Authority logo at the top. There are multiple language options. Scroll to the appropriate section and start to read it. Public notice. The worldwide distribution of R Pandavax is underway. Please read on for information on how and where to seek treatment. Patients who receive R Pandavax have a 96% chance of recovering, up from the 45% seen with traditional medical intervention. Right, I wish. R Pandavax rollouts are now taking place with med tents being set up outside major hospital locations in the countries and cities listed below. Symptomatic individuals should visit their nearest med tent as soon as possible for assessment and hospital admission. So in other words, you can kill Mallory in the game. Holy shit. Hang on, this couldn't be real, could it? It's getting down the list and there's not the name of our city. Is this actually real? Our Pandavax treatment will be administered free of charge with identification requirements relaxed by emergency order. Our Pandavax may also have a preventative effect. And individuals who have not been infected may opt to receive an immunizing dose. I scrolled down, sir. I scrolled up, down, searching for the screen for evidence that this is fake scam alive. Full internet search R Pandavax. At least 100 articles came up, all posted within 24 hours. Bulletins from different news sources saying statements from researchers, schedules being shared. Mallory! Called up towards the loft, my wife shaking like crazy, my gaze not leaving the screen. I stood up, tremors running through my whole body. Mallory, it's real! Mallory, we have to go now! I was dashing up the stairs, staggering toward the bed, ready to pick her up and carry her out of the cab if I had to. I couldn't believe this, I couldn't believe our luck. It felt like a dream, could it be real? I reached across the bed for her and... Holy shit, this woman is crazy. She wasn't there. Mallory? I looked around the dark room wildly. Mallory! Kevin remained silent. My heart pounded. Was she... Where was she? I raced back downstairs, calling out again as I searched the cabin, throwing, uh, throwing open the doors to the aquaponics room and the bathroom and the storage room, frantic. Where was she? That's when I noticed something resting on the kitchen table, small notebook left open. I went over and picked it up. Top page of a note written in purple ink. Lumped form in my throat and my stomach twisted. We both know I have it. My only hope is that it's not too late. That I haven't passed it to you. Because I want you to carry on with your life. These games always try to touch my heart, like, out of everything possible. Don't worry about me. I'm going back home to find out what happened to my sister. Whatever the answer is, I'm comforted to know we'll see each other again soon. I hope you know I would have stayed with you forever. But I'm thankful we had the time that we did. Love, Mallory. Stared at the leather. No, I had only just been laying next to bed, laying in bed next to her. I had only just found out I might actually be able to help her. And now she was gone. Crumble of paper in my hand, forming a tight fist. In that moment, I was ready to put a hole through my wall. My heart was racing. I couldn't think straight. Damn it! I had to go after her. She could have made it far, not with her leg and how sick she was. I was determined to find her, convincing her to come back, convince her that we should 
be together or whatever the circumstances, she needed to know how I felt about her, how much she meant to me. But the thing is, she could have went any fucking direction. <laughs> but even though she said she's going back to see her sister, you know, that's... There's a possibility there's one way that she could have went. I raced to get dressed throwing on a sweater and the first pair of pants I found, shoving my feet into some shoes and grabbing the crank-powered flashlight off the side of the table. I gotta say, I... I don't mind any emotions, but fuck, I hate being an emotional little shit. There were, wasn't time to think, I just had to move. The rest of the front door and out the porch. <sighs> Nearly tripping down the steps before racing across the muddy lawn, my feet splashed in puddles. I was panting, sprinting almost blindly through the dark in whatever direction I thought Mallory might have gone. I was through the garden over the hill near the woods when... Suddenly I slammed against the ground, pain shot through my through me. It took me a moment to get my bearings and understand what happened. Why did I knew this was probably gonna bite me in the ass later on and like really the SPS logo on the shoes? <laughs> Where can I get a pair of these? Oh my god. The trap, how the hell, but I, but no, I completely forgot about moving it. How did it let this happen? I sagged against the ground, grinding my teeth. I couldn't let this slow me down. I gathered my strength, pushed myself up, and looked back at my foot. My foot that had been caught in a strange angle. I could only assume it was because the way I had been running so fast, practically flying over the slopping ground. Yeah, it's fucking insane. I fucking knew. Like, the thing was, either I move it or I don't move it, and I th still think the outcome would probably be exactly the fucking same. Piston and reached to release the trap, which took a few tries, but I was able to scramble away and stand up, but my pain, the pain in my foot was excruciating. No time to deal with that now. I continue to let, I continued down the path and limping heavily and bleeding into my shoe, calling Mallory's name. Wish there was an option just to take away the fucking trap, because, let's face it, it doesn't seem like the traps are useful. They're only good at capturing a Mallory and a Tensor, and that's it. As I made my way, I shoved my hand into my sweater pocket and pulled out a flashlight, the same one that, that led me to Mallory that first night. You know, it probably would have been better to put it away. Exactly, but there's no option to fucking do that. Discord's going crazy. Both. Well, okay, have fun then with HW. I also am blind too. I got prescribed plus 0 0.25 for both eyes, and yet. I know where my glasses IDK <laughs> they went though. <laughs> Fucking Raptors blind as fuck. Immediately started cranking it, hoping against the hook. I can't read worth a shit. It's because I'm so invested in the story that I want to keep going, but at the same time, I visit like I, with my eyes, I read faster than what I can speak. I immediately started cranking it, hoping against hope that it would lead me to her again. But as I entered the trees, I stopped hesitating. Mallory's note said she was headed back to the city to check on her sister. Looks like if she had taken the footpath through the woods, the path she had taken to get here in the first place, I might be able to catch up with her, with her if I followed, but it depended on how much the head start she had. If I followed the old driveway instead, better she make it to the highway? It was a longer path, but more straightforward one. If I could manage to flag down a car and get a ride, I may even 
Free city before Mallory did. Had to pick quickly. We go from her being all scared and climbing into the bed to sleep to her fucking running away. I can't handle this. Fuck, I don't have. Keys, am I right? <sighs> so good. Both options seem risk so risky. I took my chance to start down the driveway towards the main road. All right, I could barely walk on my injured foot. The my shoot felt tight and wet, with every step sent pain shooting through my soul. I'm tapping the speed run, go right back, and move that fucking trap because fuck. The light from the flash bobbed ahead of me, lighting up potholes and stones for me to step around and over. It took longer than it should have. Wait, wasn't there... In the advertisement, wasn't there a, a picture of like inside the city with Mallory? <gasps> Kilometer. So we're in Canada, guys. Probably on the the uh, west coast, which probably means we're right next. To, like, does that say Sad Panda? We're entering this town called Sad Panda. Holy shit. It took longer than it should have, but soon I was at the turn where the driveway met the main road. How? Like, is he still bleeding? Because this sounds like it. he would bleed to fucking death. <laughs> like, it honestly sounds like he would have already bled to death and, you know, we would have game over. Like, shit. With high mass lights towering over me, the road itself was desolate. Of course, few people travel anymore. Still, as I staggered along the shoulder in the direction of the city, I kept on cranking my flashlight, swinging it back and forth of the chance that someone, anyone might come along and see me. Without a Mallory keeping me, kept me going, I walked for a long, long time. It felt like a ghost world. Dude, does this guy just make so much blood that he can't just die? It's immortal. Please, is anyone out there? My voice held more despair than I ever realized I was feeling. But then as if my desperate voice had summoned a car appeared in the distance. I heard it I heard it before I saw it, and when I saw it, I started waving my arms again. I'm supposed to stay away from people, my brain reminded me. Shut up! That's not important right now. We all do it at some point, you know, we all just tell ourselves. Shut up, that's not important right now. We all say it. I was getting closer, its headlights glaring. I tried to, to jump on my foot her too much. Stop! Please! Stop! I need help! The car began to slow. I stumbled towards it. The window rolled down and the driver peered and saw my bloody foot and gas. Oh my god, what happened to you? Was that... Is that Cassie's voice? Hold up. That sounds so familiar. No, I can't replay it. I'm trying to get to the city. Please, I'm hurt, and she's. No, I can't replay it. It sounded so much like Cassie. Oh my god! It had like a Brooklyn accent and everything over in the west coast of, of Canada. Holy shit, Cassie went far. I couldn't even say it. How could I explain? Get in. I'll take you to the hospital. Bro, that sounds so much like Cassie. This has to be Cass. Like, really? Bro. I guess you could say I'm a degenerate at this point. In order to cry, I hobbled to the passenger door and climbed in. My car, the city rose 
around us in minutes as we moved together the dim the dim peered on streets I looked out the place I never hoped to return to it looked so much more uh, de desperate than I imagined the buildings were totally overgrown there were broken windows and crumble bricks the roads were all cracked apart here are the yes this I remember this is what I remember and then there's I don't know if they put her sprite there but Mallory was here here and there are bits of keep your distance tape fluttered forgotten people who left did not need to be reminded temporary clothes for the hospital gal axi I'm trying to see if there's any SPS sh like shit like blush blush crush crush Tiffany No Tiffany's Huni Pop One and two I think I forget if she's in two we should have put her in two if she's not in two because Tiffany's really fucking good. Oh boy. Anyway, there's a lot of vandals too. We drove past one dusty looking grocery store that looked which had three people lined up outside. Each of them wearing a heavy duty mask and space at least eight feet apart from one another. I couldn't imagine how tough it must be when a Mallory and her family living here trying to stay safe and survive in a rump dump like this. The hospital came into view pretty quickly. I thanked the driver profusely for the ride, hopping out of the car almost before it even fully stopped. When I saw the men med tent erect the in the street outside the hospital, I couldn't almost believe my eyes. It existed just like the email bulletin said it would, but there was only hardly anyone around. A medical worker decked down PPE emerged from the tent holding a clipboard and looking around. A man with a small child called out from several feet away and the worker being again asking questions I couldn't hear. This is how they were saving the world quietly and with eerie calm. During the hope I looked for Mallory by if some miracle I had by if some miracle she had made her way here, but then maybe everything would actually be okay. I spotted another small group bring her nearby I lurched towards them. I'm looking for a girl. Her name is Mallory. Her hair is long and white. She's wearing purple. Moved from person to person, pleading, but no one answered. I didn't answer for me. All of a sudden I hear the faint squeal of a megaphone voice crackling over near empty street. If you are awaiting preventative care, we ask that you remain patient while we triage symptomatic individuals. If you are currently experiencing symptoms like fever, headache, fatigue, or dry coughing, or have recently been in close contact with someone who is, please proceed to the screening area for assessment. Medical record showing the man and child into the med tent now he's staggered over. Did you see a very sick girl dressed in purple? My co-worker looked at me startled. I'm sorry, no. Who is she? And have you been in close contact with this person? Uh, no. If she's not here, can you help me find her? Because she's really sick and I need to find her and bring her here. If you've been in contact with an infected individual, then the most important thing right now is for you to get assessed and admitted for treatment. You do understand how rapidly the virus proliferates. The sooner we can begin treatment, the better your chances will be. Please, follow me. But no, I have to... Please. Right now, you are potentially shedding the virus in a public space. You need to enter the med tent. I looked around at your empty street. Why does he keep arguing? But what can I say? Well, it's an empty street. The vendors, the medic, I must have seen the pain and hopelessness on my face. I will try to find out about your friend. Now, please. I need you to enter the med tent. No. You sound like... Who the fuck do you sound like? Honestly, she kind of sounds like Iro, if I'm going to be honest. No. Your internet is so inundated with entitlement that there's a 98% chance this dialogue will offend someone. I will try to find out about your friend. Now please, I need you to enter the med tent. Fumi is... is too powerful. 
Fui is way too powerful. There's nothing I've done to stop her now. She's already been into the world. <laughs> Ugh, fuck. The thing is, if I let Mallory keep going, she's probably gonna fucking die. But at the same time, if I don't, I'll probably die too, so it's, uh... Fuck it. Where's Mallory? I can't stop until I find her. Please, there's no one here, but she's somewhere. And if I can just find her and get her back here in time, that's a life saved. What to do? Honestly, that's why the save scum thing is a thing. So I kind of want to go back and say, no, I'm not going to go to the road. But I think if I don't do that, I won't get to Mallory in time and fucking die. Or she'll die. And then, you know, I'll probably die in the game too. But then, you know, it choices, choice matter games are always, always fun. It doesn't matter what it is, it's always fun. The medic look kind of lost. I was already backing away, getting ready to start running again. Mallory wasn't here, then she had to be at the planetarium, or at least on her way to it. Wait, don't go yet. Like, I don't think you were here when I said this, uh, Panda Lover. To a certain extent, I do like Pick Your Poison, which is basically what, like, Choices Matter games are. But at the same time, it's just so fucking toxic. Yeah, let me rephrase that. I like Choices Matter or Pick Your Poison in video games because of how, you know, like Choices Matter it is and all that. It's just I don't like Pick Your Poison IRL because, you know, it's always like, okay, do I do this and then stuff for this or vice versa? You know? The medic disappeared inside the tent. A couple of people who had been waiting nearby moved closer, hovering. It's probably wrong of me to race ahead of them demanding the lone medic's attention, but honestly, whatever. It was... it wasn't as though there were crowds and crowds of people waiting for aid. The only thing I cared about was Mallory. The medic re-emerged holding out a, a bulky handset. Take this. It's a satellite phone. We have a few of them for contacting other med centers. Oh yeah, I can get disturbing. I would say, like, IRL, it's probably more disturbing than video games because, like, let's face it. It's a video game, you know? And if the video game has the power to, like, ruin you, then maybe you shouldn't be playing that game, right? Like, honestly, like, seeing some of the people who, like, take certain games, like, Call of Duty, and then they rage and, like, throw their fucking, like, controllers across the room and break all that shit, it's like, okay, maybe you shouldn't be playing the game because, you know, Sure, it's your own fucking property, but, like, you're damaging your own fucking property. You know? As soon as you find your friend, call us. If we know where you are, we might be able to send help. I don't do that. Bro, that's always... Uh, is that Shy Lily? <gasps> you have Shy Lily emotes? Yo! But hey, congrats on not doing that. I used to... Like, the way I used to do it is I'd just get mad, I wouldn't throw the controller or anything, but I'd just get mad and be like... Really? That just happened to me? And then I'd just jump right back in and give it another shot and hope that, you know, I was quicker. Or just had the better gun set up. But then I eventually quit Call of Duty because I got tired of the people who... Who do the hacking and whatnot. You know, they put the aimbot mods on and this and that and the other mods and basically see you before you come around the fucking corner and blast your face off. Because like the one of the last matches that made me quit, this guy was shooting. Like I don't know if he heard me in the game through like if he had his audio cranked all the way up to like 250% or some shit. But he knew I was going to come around the corner and then he just started shooting before he wasn't even around the corner. He didn't stop shooting. And I'm like, what the fuck? It seemed like he had infinite ammo too. And I was like, what? 
what is this? Like, and then uh, it was after that stream I just kind of uninstalled the game and quit. I just go over and try again, which is honestly the best thing to do. You know, if you need to just put the game down for like five minutes, go watch or go play some Crush Crush. And then go right back because Crush Crush is a great game to relax with, you know? The way the gratitude washed over me as I took the sat forward, I definitely didn't have have to be told twice that time had never been more of essence. Thank you. Thank you. I'm already doing that. <laughs> That's always good though, you know. And then when you you know, when you're at this point in Crush Crush, you're like Oh, I need to wait a little bit. Then you just go to blush blush, you know? And then you complete blush blush and then... And then when you're done with blush blush and you're still waiting on crush crush, then you're like, Alright, what do I do next? You go to cookie clicker. <laughs> because let's face it. You don't need to pause cookie clicker, even though I have paused good. I should bring cookie clicker back. Like, I really should. Now, those, that was fun back in the day. I can do Cookie Clicker, Town of Salem, boom. You know, I die in Town of Salem, and then I don't have any redemption arc, and I just go play Cookie Clicker, because I'm like, alright, no one's gonna revive me, no one gives two shits, you know. You don't have Cookie Clicker? I think you can still get it online for free if you go to the, the website or whatever. But Steam, I think it's like five bucks or some shit like that. But hey, you do you, you know, cookie clicker. I never beat the game. I probably should go beat the game. I was already hurrying away, almost into disbelief at this blessing. I carried on down the street calling Mallory's name, though everyone seemed so deserted. There was a handful of people around who turned Looked at me puzzled. They avoided my path. I avoided theirs. Oh. Handle I think I know what's happening. Marshmallow is calling... Is calling Mallory's name, right? What if Mallory hears her name... And then she just hides. You know, like, does a, a stealth plus, like, 200 or some shit. And I'm pretty sure you can actually win the game of Click Clicker. It's just... It takes forever because of the whole like cookie tree that you have to fill up of like cookie advancements and blah 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 and all like the the shit you have to do and all that but you know I don't know what else to say about it Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, wait, 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 wait a minute. There, so I have another stream on, on my other monitor, right? And it's for a college, and they're like, we have 17, like an average of 17 students per class. But we have an 11 to 1 student to teacher ratio. I'm getting confused vibes, if you ask me. Oh no, it's an American Express commercial, they're... Oh my god. My boss is like, if anyone uses American Express, we're gonna charge a little extra because... It's American Express, they charge so fucking much. And I'm like, yeah. Fucking sucks. You know? Hey, these banks gotta make money somehow, so they do it in ways. Then why get it? Because certain banks, like my bank, for example, they issue their credit cards out as a visa. And you know, it is what it is. And I think. And oh, what was it? I don't remember, but I know certain banks they issue like Mastercard. Others like do Visa, others do American Express. It just, it just depends, you know. And it's, you know, what people like and do whatever, you know. 
Reach back in my memory trying to get my bearings to figure out which way to go. The planetarium was closer to the river. I knew that. I started down the street in that direction. My head was spinning. I couldn't feel my foot anymore. Eh, you don't fucking need it. I kept, but I kept going, leaving bloody shoe prints behind me. Bro. Dude. Pandalover, it sounds like this, like, MC has been bleeding for hours. How is he not fucking dead yet? From lack of blood. Like, I, I need to know. Just any random explanation, I don't care. I just need an explanation because, bro. It sounds like he's been bleeding for at least an hour. And he's done nothing about it. He hasn't even tried to put a bandage on, he's just like, Look at this, I gotta go find this girl. Holy shit, this is the ultimate simp. Like, this takes simping to the next level. Because I will probably be going dead soon. Well, I think what's gonna happen is all the blood's gonna go out of his head first. Because it's, all of it's going through his leg. So he, he's probably gonna be, like, head dead. And before his leg dies, but... The power of Shy Lily. <laughs> The Shy Lily Rave, I believe that is? Yeah, Rave. Man, Shy Lily is so fucking good. <laughs> hope was the only thing keeping me going. Bro, the power of hope in this game seems too powerful. I turned over the rub- I turned over ru the rubble in the streets, passing broken hazard signs and empty storefronts, unable to stop myself from imagining the riots that must have taken place here years ago. It's incredible how... how this game came out in 2021 when all this shit was going down, and it's stupid accurate. Hope and simp together create immortality. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think there's any other way to put it. Like, I literally don't think there's any other way to put it. Wait, then that's how you win, win a hush hush. That's all you do. When the top of the old planetarium building came into my view, I sprinted the rest of the- Holy shit! Bro, he goes from limping to just- Fucking booking it with like a fucking busted fucking foot, dude. I looked at the building surrounding that one, which is the apartment building where Mallory lived. Scanned all the windows and balconies in sight, looking for some sign of her. I want to know how, too. I want to know how. Like, does is he? Okay, the, I know you haven't been around for this, but I used to play this game called Foxhole, and I used to be the medic in the game. And what I'd do is I'd run around, screaming pain is irrelevant, and healing everybody. It was the best. But I guess that's what Marshmallow is saying in this game. Pain is irrelevant, fucking booking it. That's, that's what I believe is going on right now, like straight up. Turn to the circle, searching every street, corner, and bus stop I could, could see it was like a ghost town. I took my head. Uh, I took my head back to call out for Mallory. How? Well, in Foxhole, it's kind of like Call of Duty, where you just run up to someone and just go, just like stab them with a syringe, and then they come back to life. That's kind of how it it, it worked, you know. Except in this game, you had to use this thing called a trauma kit, and then a trauma kit gets them from from a like dead to stable and then you get a bandage kit or a med kit and that's how you brought them from like low health to, to max health and then sent them back out and also fun fact when you heal someone with the, the med kit all the blood on their uniform just goes away it's so it's not like just your your medic you're just a straight up person who cleans the clothes off too and then you send them back to the front line and, you know, because in that game, it's it's much more efficient to obviously not die, of course, 
but it's more much more efficient to revive someone on the front line versus say oh yeah just go respawn because bro maybe in the future i will play foxhole and then you'll probably see and be like oh that's interesting because at, at the end of the day i would say every game's interesting it's just that's cool it's interesting but it's not my type of game type deal if that makes sense Uh oh, that's when I caught sight of a purple figure on the rooftop overhead. Now she's gonna go fucking hide because right around going, Mallory! Mallory! You know, she's gonna fucking run now, dude. She's she's gonna bolt. Mallory! Don't move! I'm coming! Do you know if she could hear me? I just hurried as fast as my body would let me. Around the building to the fire escape, a dry, rattling feeling was building up in my chest. I could hardly breathe. Bro. Dude. Panda lover, you're fucking right. It doesn't even sound like this guy has drank water for like the past however long he's been fucking running to. And I guess he's just gonna fucking die. But thanks to the power of simp and hope, you know? I reached the top of the fire escape and hauled myself I found to the roof where I could, where I was sure I'd seen Marley. I looked around for for a moment. My body ceased all function. I couldn't actually feel my heart. I could actually feel my heart skip a beat. Where was she? Mallory. A cold or cool breeze blew past me, and all I could do was stand there for a moment, processing everything that was happening. Turn to find the source of that small, weak voice. Bro, all of them are so good even though she's she's being a rebel and running away and not like letting, you know, her senpai care for her. Even though she knows. Wait, if that... What? This doesn't make any sense. She called Marshmallow Senpai, right? Which means she's a Yandere. Yet she runs away. I don't understand. But hey, if that's how this Yandere wants to work, that's how the Yandere is going to work. There she was at the opposite edge of the rooftop, her delicate frame backlit by the gentle sunrise. Dark hollows hung under her eye eyes and her cheeks. She trembled and barely able to hold herself upright. What? Because I'm a simp. She didn't look at me as she spoke. My throat felt like it was twisting shut. Your letter. I found it, and I, I couldn't just let you go. She listened and continued to gaze out at the cityscape, avoiding eye contact. With me. You shouldn't be here. It's dangerous for you to be close to me. She was so out of breath, I approached her slowly, terrified that she would just float away. Sim power brought us here. <laughs> Damn right. That doesn't matter to me now. I care about you too much. I... I love you, Mallory. She turned her, her face, finally giving a, me a weak smile. You dummy. I love you too. That's why I had to leave. You're a fucking Sundere too. Oh my god, she's a Sundere Yandere. Is that even is that even possible? Actually, is that like legit even possible to be a Yandere Sundere? Well, I mean, the I guess that saying is true. If you love it, let it go. She swayed then, as though turning to look at me. She had a, she made she. As though turning to look at me had made her dizzy. And her body dipped towards the ledge. Oh my fucking god. SPS, you son of a bitch. Don't worry, SPS, I was I'll still love you even if this is fucking happening. 
I lunged, panic, and grabbed Mallory's narrow arms. In one swift move, I had pulled her onto myself, redirecting the shift in weight to have her fall into my arms. Gently, I helped her lay down. Her cheeks were blood red, her skin like fire. She struggled to keep her eyes open. Okay, good. Okay, good. Alright. Strength plus 20. There we go. It worked. Wait, why is Marshmallow in? Marshmallow's not supposed to be in any cutscene. I thought that was like a rule of SPS is they don't have Marshmallow in any cutscene. Well, okay, I take that back. They can have Marshmallow in certain cutscenes like this, for example, you know? Like, this is perfectly, totally fine. I, don't, I have nothing against this. This is cool. But this? No! Ruined. I don't have much time left. Hold on. Wait a minute. We're only in chapter eight, right? Hold on. No! Take me to my these achievements. I want to see the achievements. Wait. No. There's only eight end or eight chapters. Oh no, dude. Where did I go wrong? M maybe you're just a dream. No, Valerie, you don't understand. There's a treatment. There's a treatment, and it's right here in the city, and I love you. There's a cure? <sighs> I nodded vigorously, fumbling for the sat phone I shoved in my pocket. My sister wasn't home. D do you think maybe she managed to get the cure? I don't know why, but I'm blocking all the emotions like shit. My shoulders rounded as I fought back tears. Of course, Mallory wouldn't even think of herself. I'm going to get you help. I'm calling right now, and someone's gonna come. The phone was in my hands. My thumbs poised over the stiff tactical buttons. The number it had been printed on my med tent, but what was it? I'm remembering the middle one for some reason, but I feel like I feel like it's not the middle one. Wait a minute. No, it can't be because it, it's the wrong setup for if, unless Canada does it differently. Because if Canada does it differently, what if it's actually SPS's phone number? <laughs> like their, their office. Fuck it. Punch the number, hoping I had add it. I had remembered it correctly. A robotic voice told me through the phone that this number is not in service. And I remembered incorrectly. I thought back to what I had seen on the sign on the tent, willing, to, willing my memory to grasp that all important number fully. I dialed again, but my horror of the outcome was the same, which means I fucking. 
I didn't know the number. I clicked the wrong one. Fuck. Look down at Mallory's face at that beautiful hope in her eyes. No, thought my brain dumbly. No. No, this can't. I can't. I can't let her know, I thought. Calmly in response. Pressed a random string of numbers and held my sat phone to my ear. We're here! We're just across the planetarium building! I found her, and she's okay! You'll be right here? I tried my heart to sound convincing, but my hand shook so hard I dropped the phone. I leaned over Mallory, holding her tight. Help is on the way! You're going to be alright! We're going to be alright! We're going to spend a little time in the hospital, but then we can go home! Back to the cabin! Where we're going to live happily ever after! It was selfish of me to stay with you. I should have known. No, no, don't start that! <coughs> she paused, sputtering and coughing weakly. Then she tried to smile, but tears washed across her eyes and said, I'm so sorry. Her eyes began to close, and I could tell she was starting to fade. You have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I was alone for so long, I forgot what it was like to live. And then you came into my world, and... Tears begin to roll down my cheeks. You don't need to have any regrets. Because having you in my life has been the best thing to ever happen to me. So don't you dare regret anything. Too weak to wipe away her tears, they fell onto cold concrete blocks where we were resting a chill. Breeze blew up the side of the building and carried it with the state of smell of pavement. Let's just rest. You can close your eyes if you need to. We'll wait just like this until they get here. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Aww. Uh, the wind died down and suddenly everything was impossibly silent and still. Mallory's hand slid off my lap and fell to the ground. Slowly I watched her eyes. Those one last time, and a quiet peace fell over us all color and left her soft cheeks and I felt her presence leave me. The sunrise shone a bright beam of Light on us almost as if we were players in a tragic play caught under the spotlight. Soft, softly I grazed my hand across her cheek to feel her warmth one last time before she turned cold. I'm sorry. I had failed. I had come so, so close to saving her, but I had failed. With a heavy sigh, I got on one knee and slipped my hand. Hands underneath Mallory's lifeless body, with ease I managed to lift her to my arms. She was always much lighter than I expected. I held her and looked over the city one last time. The sun continued to rise. Soon knew the residents would be waking up somewhere back the cabin. I imagined my rooster was crowing. I apologized to him and the hens, knowing that I would, wouldn't be back in time to feed them. That moment, nothing felt real anymore. Well, it did make me happy to hear that people would finally have a cure. The sadness could only end. I only felt a bitter resentment myself. Raven was calling loudly somewhere nearby. Numbness set in, and even the sun's warmth had no power over me anymore. I didn't feel anything, and I didn't want to anymore. I looked down at Mallory's delicate face and studied her perfect lips, pale cheeks, and wispy hair. She was all I wanted. So then we would be together. Step. Thud. Watch this. Easy. Zero deaths. Yes, that was it. See, zero deaths. She never died, guys. I fooled everyone. Thank you, Rain, I thought, as the ring started to go through. 
You're welcome, replied my brain as more rings went through. Started to worry that no one would pick up, but then finally someone did. I didn't know if it was the same medic who'd given me the sat phone, but either way, I immediately started rattling off every detail I could about where we were and how to get there. Then I threw the phone down and wrapped my arms around Mallory. Someone's coming. Help is coming. All I could, all I could hope for now was that they would get here fast it enough. It was selfish of me to stay with you. I should have known. No, no, don't start that. She paused, sputtering, coughing weakly, then tried to smile, but tears washed across her eyes instead. I'm so sorry. No, is it? Is it the same thing? No. There's a good ending, right? There has to be. There has to be a good ending. Show me the good ending. Live happily ever after? Bro, there is a happy ending. Except, you know, I'm probably gonna get all the bad ones before I get the good one. And yeah, that was... That was fucking sad. No, Not that game. Her eyes began to close and I could tell she was starting to fade. You have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I was alone for so long I forgot what it was like to live. And then you came into my world and... Having you in my life has been the best thing to ever happen to me. And I cannot wait for us to go home and live happily ever after together. Stay with me, Mallory. We're going to get you help, and everything's going to be okay. Wait, wait, what? Hold up, hold up. We waited together on the, on the rooftop as the sun came up, splitting open the clouds and the shining... The clouds and the shining on us like a spotlight. I willed the medic to get here fast, faster than felt like what... The wait felt like, I, felt like an eternity. Then far below I heard a rumble vehicle pulling up, a door popping open, and a distant voice. <gasps> Wait, no, I I was pointing out the happy ending and I'm gonna fucking get it. It was two weeks before Mallory and I were finally able to return to the cabin. Wait, then that means that the chickens are probably fucking eating each other or they're all dead. Holy shit. Mallory had spent most of that time quarantined receiving a breakthrough. Our Pandavax treatment, which carried her gently back from the brink of death. I received a preventive, preventive treatment as well and was monitored closely for symptoms. Finally, we were discharged and we found our way back home. All the leaves had, were golden red as mountains had snow on their peaks. The first thing we did was check the ch on the chickens when they find they had torn open their feed bag and had themselves a feast while we were away. <laughs> They were very fat and very happy to see us. <laughs> we took care, careful stroll around the rest of the property too, just to make sure they looked okay to make sure none of any issues I needed to deal with. Then we were about ready to head inside. Near the front porch, we found a package which looked to be left outdoors for a little too long. Must be that order I placed for drone delivery. With the first aid kit and the aspirin and yeah, panda lover. I was like, I was like, no, nah, she's fucking dead again. Like, god damn it, it's, she's gonna die again. I have to go down a different path and this and that and the other. But no, fucking lives this time. My voice trailed off. It feels like a million years ago. Sat down on the porch. Stepped to open the package, hardly able to wait, ignoring the first aid kit and the aspirin bottle, I pulled out a small cardboard box I knew I, I, I knew would have Mallory's ring inside. Looked up at her, suddenly a little nervous. I have a gift for you. A gift? Really? Eee! What is it? Grinned at cute, uh, I grinned at how cute she was. I held the box up to her and 
danced a little as she took it. She lifted, she lifted the lid to peer inside. Oh my goodness, it's, it's so pretty. It reminded me of you. Her eyes look so shiny. She smiles and leaned down to kiss right me. On. It looks so good. All right. Like, holy shit. This looks really fucking good. Get rid of the fucking camera. We need to fucking see all this. This is so fucking good. Wait, I, I don't know how else to get over how good all this, this art that SPS has. Like, bro. This is definitely the happy ending. She took the ring out of the little box and slid it onto her narrow finger. I had totally guessed her ring size, but luckily it was a little, it was a perfect fit. She tilted her head back and forth, smiling at the silver bow and glisten and glistening stone. She's seeing her so happy made me happy. I love you, Mallory. I love you too. <laughs> Feels good to say that when we're not in a life or death situation, am I right? She giggled. We went inside together for a long while. We just enjoyed each other's companies. We ate, we talked, we laughed. And we held each other. Then the sun dropped below the horizon and the sky grew dark. I thought back to what Mallory had told me about her love for the stars. What would you say if I asked you to spend this evening stargazing with me? Say, I know the most perfect spot. Don't my grin get even bigger. I'll grab some blankets. Meet me up there. Sure. She still has the bandage on. Oh my god, that must be one like, like what was that? So that was technically three weeks. She's still not healed from three. Holy shit, dude. Unless she just likes wearing it, actually, which, you know what, hey, if she wants to wear it, she wants to wear it. A few minutes later, I climb up onto the roof with a big blanket folded over my shoulder. Mallory was sat waiting for me, watching me with those beautiful eyes and the sweetest smile. My heart felt warmer than it ever had. The pain and loss we'd experienced would always be there but now there was also joy to be felt so much joy so much life to be lived there would always be sorrow and endings but like a sun but like a sunset or a flower the impermanence of the very moment was exactly what made it so valuable now i really truly wish i played this before Hush rush because fuck. This would be a perfect setup of getting to know SPS visual novel before hush hush. Went to sit with Mallory under the stars. Alright, let's do let's do the credits real quick because fuck. Alright. I did two endings of the game and haven't done and done credits yet, so respects. Wait, no. No In loving memory of Mio? No Not Mio Eleven out of ten actually, by the way. But we'll accept a ten out of ten. Voice talents. Morgan did some of the voices. Oh my god, Morgan. Dr. Wes. Exographics, I believe it is. Elisa Parks. Main character voice 1. Daniel Actosa. Main character voice 2. Caitlin Barr. If we're going over 10, then yes. We can always go over 10, you know? Mallory was played by Mallory 
Etch Lemur? Or Meyer, I believe? I... Look, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Mallory, okay? I, I'm doing my best. Audio mastering Connor ORT Lining Pepperoni Panda. Pepperoni Panda, Morgan Long, Artist Panda. Art. Oh yeah, Yuki. Uh, Yuki Lumino. Uh, I... As a Yuki? Deo... Nguyen? I believe. Oda Nguyen? Morgan Long, of course. Wait, no. Mur didn't do any of the art? Oh my god. Writers, Morgan Long. Artist Panda, Rebecca Shelley, Witchy Panda, Programming, Programmer Panda, QA, uh, Shane Doyle, QA Panda, Al, Alan Hagen, Assistant Panda. Wait, so that's who I talked to when I sent them the videos for the bugs that I found in Hush Hush? Well, now I know the, the, the name behind the face. Sound effects. Audio purchased from Audio Blocks. Hey, it works. Music and trailering. Screen Screenhog Studios. Wow. Special thanks, Cody, Vigu, OG Panda, for reading the original draft and giving writing tips. Trash Panda, Kristen, for your lovely lettering and help drawing doggos. <laughs> There's dogs in the game. Wait, what? Oh yeah, yeah, there was a dog in the game. Sad Panda Super Fans who helped play test the game. All right, congrats to all them, but also, unfortunately, in loving memory of Mio, the theme of this story rings very true to me. That it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Near the completion of this visual novel, I lost my dearest cat Mio, who had been in my life for the past 15 years. I'll never forget how wonderful and gentle a soul. He was. I consider myself so lucky to have known him and gave him all the love in my heart. It's an incredible gift to spend time with special people and pets throughout our lives. As fleeting as that time is, cherish every moment and love them with your whole heart. XOXO Morgan. Well, rip Mio. That's. That sucks. I hope Quill is still doing, still doing all right, though. Because if I remember correctly, Quill and Mio are both named after the cats. But man, that did, bro. That felt. That felt like there's more people who actually worked on the game than what was actually listed there. Which is very interesting. Yo, I got all three of the first pages. I got all of those, Calorie. Yeah, oh, gosh. Go, go back. Oh, my. Wonder how the 18 plus would be? Let me take a quick look actually. Because I'm I'm actually curious. Uh wait, I didn't need to close the game out, I just needed to keep it open. No, don't fucking break. I still can't believe 74% of the achievements done. Holy shit, is it- Doesn't she take the bath on like day one? Or two or some shit like that? Cause fuck, I would get banned so hard right there. Now I didn't expect much 18 plus out of this because... Holy shit, this game is deep. Now I want to see, I can't because I'll get banned. Even though I do want to get banned. 
there has to be more than just that for the 18 plus content in this. Yo, if I might have to show that, well, I'll just do it myself soon. Hey, you do you. That's all I got to say. We oh, yeah, have Mio, Mio, uh, Mio Pong. That's what it is. I don't remember. I haven't memorized all of them yet. Soon I will. All right, I need to turn AT plus off. Go back. God dang it, I can't click the button. All right, gallery. All right, we're good. Yeah, but look what I Oh, not this. Look what I found. If... If it has two... If it has, like, multiple cutscenes on it, or CGs, it'll... You're not gonna do it now? Oh, now it does it. So there's a progress bar at the bottom, and when it fills up, she changes. It's so cool. I wonder if they did that in Hush Hush, and I haven't seen it yet, because I'm a fool. But hey, it is what it is. I don't know... Wait, I want to do the game again, but fuck. This game is deep. Like, straight up. Oh. The ways SPS touches me. Like, holy shit. I can't- no, I, I don't know what else to say. It was chapter 3 where I fucked up and put the trap in the wrong spot. Oh. Alright, so what are some of the other endings I need to get? It seems like the rest of these endings are just the sad ones. So... This is gonna fucking suck. I think I know how to, how to get one. Ins accept treatment. Okay. Instant regret achievement unlocked. Oh my god. After that, everything became a blur. Inside the tent, I was brought to a makeshift bed. The bed was surrounded by heavy plastic curtains that distorted everything around me. The machines, the hazmat suits, the, the flapping canvas walls, and the noisy buzz of a generator was like a jackhammer in my ears. A spiral of guilt and confusion consumed me. Were they sick? No. All of the horrible feelings in my body were because I had been running so hard that through the night, weren't they? There are nine endings according to Steam achievements, yes. And. These achievements that are made on Steam are made by the developer slash developers of the game. Like, Steam doesn't just put those in. If the developer wants them in, the developer has to make them and post, post them to Steam. And then Steam, you know, does their magic to get the achievement to work. So... It is what it is. We have seven to go. Or had I felt the inklings of them before? So I checked my temperature, asked me questions, took my blood. Before I knew it, I was being wheeled from tent to the hospital building in itself for quarantine. Don't worry, we're going to take care of you. Everything's going to be all right. Mio! Mio! Mio's here. I didn't know who was talking to me because I could. I didn't see anyone's face, all I knew I was I didn't really believe them. 
It's Mio! Bro, it's Mio! Mio is here, bruh! Having been in the hospital, receiving preventive treatment, and being monitored closely for symptoms, I was finally allowed to leave. We can pass. And by that time, there was no way for me to know what happened to Mallory. Search for her, of course, but it wasn't like the old days where you could just file a missing person's report or when someone would find a way to con contact you about loved ones passing. Turn to the cabin alone. The whole scene looked wrong. Somehow, the land and trees, the cabin itself all looked dried out and looked colorless. There's nothing welcoming about this place, nothing that felt warm or safe. Near the front porch found a package which looked like it had been left, left outdoors too long. My heart it sank. Must be that order I placed for drone delivery. With the first aid kit and the aspirin, and I managed to pick up the package and sat right there on the porch to open it. There was a first aid kit, neatly stocked, or nicely stocked. The fresh aspirin bottle, shiny and sealed. There's a ring I brought from bought from Mallory with the one dainty purple stone that reminded me so much of her. Stared at it for a while, started talking to myself. Do you wish you'd never met her? Yes. That's a lie. Of course it is. But I wish I'd made different choices. I wish... I wish I hadn't lost her. Yeah. A cold, brisk wind rushed past, pulling the last few crisp brown leaves off the tree, sending them Skittering, one of them whacked me in the face before flying off into the garden. Thanks, wind. I stood up. I put the ring on some twine or something and wear it around my neck and then what? And then nothing. Uh, maybe I'll get struck by lightning. At least that would be something to look forward to. Being Mallory again and whatever afterlife there was, maybe we could be ghosts together, haunting haunt the cabin and scare off any trespassers by flapping our sheets of, and rattling our ch chairs. <laughs> I turned and reached for the door or something. Something purple seemed to flash over my eye. For a briefest moment, I thought it was Mallory, but of course, there was nothing there. Someday, someday, I thought to myself getting inside. I shut the cabin door behind me. I want to put on the kettle. She looks like Generica now. You know, it's sad to fill up the gallery, but at the same time, it's necessary to fill up the gallery. At least in my point of view. Because what's 100% without 100%? Alright, I think I know where the next one is. Continue through the trees. Both off being risky, I took my chance to start down the footpath into the woods. Already, I could barely walk. My shoe felt tight, wet, and every step sent pain streak up through my soul, especially on the rugged forest floor. Shown the flashlight back and forth across the ground, trees avoiding fallen branches and jutting rocks. The thought of Mallory being out here alone, sickly, and without any light terrified me. I knew I wasn't moving fast enough. I tried to pick up the pace, ignoring the throbbing pain in my foot and breathing hard through my nose. Sun and glimmering. Caught my eye, I turned, pointing the beam off. I pointing the beam of light toward where I seen, but the motion was clumsy and I lost my balance. My pant leg caught in jutting branch as felt through I felt the fabric tear. The flashlight beam showed me where the tear showed me a white tail of a deer startled by my fall dashing away into the darkness. 
managed to catch myself grabbing a tree, but even heavily leaning heavily against it, shivering cold with the flashlight began to dim. My foot going numb, everything seemed hopeless. My heart ached to be back home. Back with her just a few hours earlier, that's where I wanted to be. Straighten myself up. Stepping back onto the path, tears caught in my vision, I blinked them away. And that's when I noticed the rip of my pant leg. These are the same pants I've been wearing the night I met Mallory. I had torn them coming to the cabin, that terror been fixed with a heart patch. Remember Mallory taking that box of clothes and seeing her later with a needle and thread as she worked to stitch up rips and fasten buttons. But she hadn't just mended these pants, she embroidered them. Left a sweet token of herself and her ability to love and care for others. My heart swelled and ached. All I wanted to do was cry. Why did this have to happen? Why did I have to lose everyone I ever dared to love? No, I refused to accept it. I stood up. My determination was to find her renewed. When my body went fly with my head. It was just my foot now, but most of my leg numb, full of pins and needles, and spursed with pain, each stab knocking my knee out of place, sending me staggering. I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going fast enough. I I couldn't go fast enough. I held onto the trees and used them to drag myself towards to dizzy to even look where I was going. Slowly pale sea lights grew visible through the, the brush. The sky was starting to lighten. Mallory. I called for her, but my voice came out weak and dry. I coughed and groaned. I feel like I could never catch up to her. I'd never find her. But. There, rising up before me, was the city. Finally, I reached the city. The sun wasn't up yet, and the streets were dim and mostly empty. It took so much more description than I imagined. The buildings were totally overgrown. I read all of this. I'm gonna skip through it. I read. I wonder what the chances that were that she ended up at a medical center either on her own or because someone who had decided to help her. After all, it was the news bulletin received those. It, after all, if the news bulletin received was true, then she might actually be able to receive treatment. Aw, shit. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let me go for the planetarium because I think. Now let me go. If the hospital brings me to the same endings, and it's the planetarium I need to go to. The hospital had to be in my best bet. Either she'd already be there, or I'd find someone who could help me look for her. I'm looking for a girl. Her name is Mallory. Her hair is. <laughs> if you are waiting for vegetative care. Do you see a very. I'm sorry, no. And have you been in close. If she's not here, can you help me find her? Because this she's has really to be... sick, and I need to find her and bring her here. I should look at the voice actress for this because this sounds like. Boomy. If you've been in contact with an infected individual, then the most important thing right now is for you to get assessed and admitted for treatment. You do understand- But no! I- Please. <sighs> okay, so it's the same thing, so... Uh, load... We're gonna go to the planetarium. I didn't think Mallory would let anything get in the way of her going home. She was determined to find out what had happened to her sister, so... That's where my search had taken me. I reached back in my memory trying to... Yep. Mallory! 
Oh no, this is gonna be a different ending. I'm I'm here. What why are you here? Your letter. I found it and I I couldn't just let you go. You shouldn't be here. It's dangerous for you to be close to me. That doesn't matter to me now. I care about you too much. I... I love you, Mallory. You dummy. I love you too. That's why I had to leave. I don't... have much time left. And this time I don't have the phone, so therefore we're getting a bad ending. M maybe you're just a dream. No, Valerie, you don't understand. There's a treatment. There's a treatment, and it's right here in the city, and I love you. Well, I got an achievement, so we're on the right path. <laughs> but it's still unfortunate. Don't you see? I could have saved you. Why did you have to run away from me? She managed to look up at me, her eyes sparked in more than ever. There's a cure? But not as vigorously. My sister wasn't home. D do you think maybe she managed to get the cure? My shoulders are out, yeah. And you. You can get it too. It was selfish of me to stay with you. I should have known. No, no, don't start that. Promise me. Promise me you'll take the cure. I don't want to die knowing I b made you sick. No, Mallory! I don't want you to go! I'll, I'll carry you down to the hospital right now, or or I'll, I'll yell until they find us up here. I shook Please her. Please go. Please. I was alone for so long, I forgot what it was like to live. And then you came into my world, and... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't need to have any regrets. Because having you in my life has been the best thing to ever happen to me. So don't you dare regret anything. Promise me you'll go on. Please. The baby chickens, they need you. Promise me. The baby chickens. The baby chickens are more important than Mallory. Is what Mallory is trying to say, guys. Yes, I promise. I promise, Mallory. It was a little while before I was able to return to the cabin as much as I wanted to give up on myself, on everything else. I made a promise to Mallory. So I went to the med tank, I got my I got assessed and admitted for preventive treatment with R Pandavax. They kept close watching me for over a week before I finally deemed me fit to go home. Went back to the cabin which didn't quite, quite feel like home anymore. It was still the same beautiful landscape, but I couldn't put my finger on what was different. So I just went about my business like normal. It's Mallory who is it? Your life for a fucking week. Chickens were fine, they ripped open their feed bag and they had a feast in my absence, so they're fat and good spirits. There was a fresh crop of weeds in the garden and on the grass, like Mallory and I had never cleared them out at all. Near the front porch found a package. Looked to be left outdoors for too long, my heart sank. that order I placed for drone delivery. With the first aid kit and the aspirin and... What now? I don't know. I wish I'd made different choices. I wish I'd been able to save her. There wasn't- there really wasn't much more to do than that. 
Got up, went inside, take the ring with me, I put it on a string and wore, wore around my neck. I decided then to make some tea and then I had to think about it for a minute. Decided I'd do something good. Thanks to science, medicine, and basic passion, there's hope for humanity again. I'd be part of that. I would help the world. We can make things better than you. We can make things even better than what they had been before. I'll do my best for her. God damn. Alright. What are some of the other ones I need to make? How much percentage am I at? Uh, 84% and I'm only 8.6 hours into the game, or at least the past two weeks. It was July 25th when I last played this game, or at least before. Wow. So I think I have four endings to go. And then SPS. At this rate, actually, like literally at this rate, SPS will be the first studio that I get three, minimum three games on 100% on Steam. Which I, I'm actually really like hyped for because I can't wait. Mostly because, you know, I feel like they earned it, where I want them to be all three, like my first three games that I have 100% achievements on because it's just so fucking good. And the reason why I was, I'm talking top three is because, well, top three, you know, after that, it's kind of like you're next in line, you're fourth. It's going to be so impressive. Crush Crush technically is number one, but how close am I? 94.44% Well That's right, the two achievements. The Crusher has become the Crushed. Crush Crushed. Credits where it's due always worthy like the last one is play it for a year yep oh yeah put a ring on it play it for a year 94.44 percent i have on the i have played the game for a little over a year i think i started in 20 20 i think it was so i've technically played it for a year but it I made the mistake of playing it on and off in 2020 and then, you know, because like the thing was, I'm sure for, you know, like majority of the world, 2020 just, you know, affected everyone in everyone's unique way. And well, that was my way. But technically, we're talking Steam achievements. Crush Crush is the first game I have gotten 100% achievements on. Which means no game can now take the number one seed. They can only take the number two seed onward. Well, okay, I'm close with DDLC, but... I don't know, I might make DDLC take the number four seed because it is what it is. Or if I... Grind it out, I might be able to get DDLC to be the number three seat. 
That's if I do this all tonight. In 15 fucking minutes. What the fuck? That was one of the weirdest commercials for a pizza ever. Fall into Forest Ravine. Here's what I think I have to do. Leave it where it's at. So I had to leave to, to leave it. The traps there for a reason after all, and what happened to Mallory was more of a freak accident than anything else. I knew where the traps were and that, that was the most important thing. Anyone unfamiliar with them shouldn't be creeping around here anyway. Confident in my decision, I carried on walking down to the garden. Where I could see where Mallory had dug up breakfast. And that's where I'm gonna start hitting the skip button because I need to get to chapter 8. Wait, wait, hold up. I'm gonna ask her what she's up to. What are you doing with those clothes? Oh, I was just going to go through them and sort out what's good to wear. I hope that's okay. The fuck was that? Hold up. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna skip through all this. Uh... You've done more than enough to help me. Answer honestly because well, we have to. Taking your sweater off. Hmm. Where do you see yourself in ten years? All right, we'll go play some of the audio then. Hang on, that sounded like a job interview question. Let me try again. What kind of life do you dream about having? What are your hopes for the future? Mallory smiled sadly. You mean, aside from hoping someone finds a way to cure this virus? Yeah, aside from that. She thought for a moment, her gaze wandering. It's sort of hard to imagine any particular future, when everything seems so fragile all the time. Anything could change at any moment. But I guess, no matter my situation, I'd always want to help people. Like, I'd love to keep a giant garden, just so I could share all the fruits and veggies with my neighbors. Also, I would learn how to knit socks, so I can make sure everyone's feet stay nice and warm, because cold toes are the worst. <laughs> and maybe... Maybe someday, I could have a family of my own. She blushed as she said that last part. I definitely didn't want her to feel embarrassed, so I quickly replied. Wow. In my fantasy, I get abducted by aliens and they teach me how to drive their spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> Mallory burst out laughing. Yeah, I may have to rethink that. For real though, that's a nice dream. Very altruistic. Mallory smiled and gave her Give a slight shrug. Anyway, I should probably let you get back to work now. Last thing I wanted to do is go back to work. I gave her a little poke just for suggesting it. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm super ticklish. No, oh, are you? I'm sorry. I didn't realize. <laughs> and then that's where everything goes back to a normal for what we remember reading. Morning, sleepyhead. Oh yeah, this scene. Wakey, wakey. Okay, you leave me no choice. Incoming pets attack. 
one of my favorite scenes of the game just because of how wholesome it is. <laughs> choice. I tried calling you, throwing things at you, and wafting delicious smells in your direction. None of those worked, so this was my last resort for getting you to wake up. And it did the trick. You're awake now. What kind of monster just pounces like that on a poor defenseless sleeping person? Monster, you say? Wow, you sure do know how to give a girl a compliment. The fucking roast. Like, that's one of my things about this scene, too. She just fucking roasts. If you're jumping about like this, does that mean your leg is feeling better? It doesn't hurt as much, but it feels kind of weak. Like it might give out if I put too much weight on it. So why did you need me to wake up so urgently? I made you breakfast and I didn't want it to get cold. Honestly, I think the not safe for work portion of this game is how fucking good the food looks. Like honestly. And I was worried. You're usually up way earlier than this. And maybe I was a little lonely and sort of missed you. Damn, what's up with me? I never sleep this long. Sometimes your body just needs a little extra rest. Okay, now. Ta da! Like just how good the food fucking looks. That is so not safe for work in this game. It should be fucking banned, bruh. My mouth is watering. I never knew that was an actual thing that happened to mouths. Tee? <laughs> Strawberry waffles from scratch will do that to you. You'll have to tell me once you taste them, but I think I may have outdone myself this time. The only thing I did make from scratch is the syrup. That's okay. I made the syrup from scratch. Wait, you did? There are tons of maple trees around here. I harvest their sap at the end of each winter. It's pretty simple. I drill small holes into the trees and insert what's called a spile, which is like a spout. The sap drains out through there and into a bucket. When I have enough to fill a pot, I essentially boil it down until it's mostly evaporated. Then it's syrup. And the best part is it keeps forever. So I can just store it in glass jars in my pantry. That sounds like some kind of fairy magic. <laughs> the real magic is your cooking. This looks incredible. Although, do you mind taking it downstairs so we can eat there? I'd like to get dressed and, well, uh... <laughs> Another reason why this is my favorite seat. Uh, I'll do that now. Sorry. See you downstairs. Oh, Mallory. Wait, maybe I was supposed to do it. No, I already- I see it when I get my pants ripped again, that's right. Well. Aw, oh, shit. What I- I wanna know what happens if you give her some space. She just looks so withdrawn and I want to invade her space and I figured that if she wanted help, she asked for it. She didn't. She just shuffled towards the ladder, hesitated for a moment at the top, then turned around. Her foot slipped. She lurched, arms wheeling with a jolt of fear I grabbed her. She regained her balance by clinging to my arm. Oh, Mallory! Be careful! She had a shaky breath. I know I joked about it before, but falling off rooftops is not actually something we want happening. Are you okay? I just got a fright, that's all. I'm okay. God damn, Bar. <clears throat> Jeez. Still, she continued holding on to me as she lowered herself down to the ladder. I waited till she reached the ground before I climbed down after. Thanks for being my hero again. <laughs> sure. Always happy to help. She smiled at me and we carefully made our way back inside the house. Hold back. Say not to move too afraid of ruining this already perfect moment. 
She had come to me for safety and comfort, and I wanted to give it that to her. Of course, of course you can stay. Get comfortable, okay? She sits close to me, resting her head. Yep. Thank you. For everything. That's right, there's no choices there. Wait, that's that's probably one of the endings. Delete the spam. Drag the wheel to the trash bin, empty the trash for bin for good measure. Then I shot to my feet, shoving my chair back aggressively. I hadn't even known how angry and helpless I felt until that moment. Looked outside again and it had stopped raining, but there was streaks of water in the window. It looked as the cabin was crying. What would I do if Mallory didn't pull through this? If it was really the virus making her sick, the chance of getting her better were... I didn't even finish the thought. I took a deep breath, trembling. Breath? Maybe some fresh air would help. Fresh air always helped. I turned, looking around for my jacket instead. My watery eyes caught sight of something resting on the table. There was a small notebook left over. I crept over to pick it up and look what it was on the page. We both know I have it. My only hope is that it's not too late. That I haven't passed it to you. Because I want you to carry on with your life. It's the same measure. Thing. Uh, let's head for the highway because everything's different. Actually, wait. Something different happened, but then as if my desperate voice had summoned it, a car appeared in the distance. I heard it before I saw it, and then when I saw it, I started waving my arms frantic for stay away from each other Sunday Shut night. Up. That's not important right now. Stop! Please. Bruh, it has the best fucking horn you could possibly probably even ask what the fuck. Yeah, yeah, Chevy Corvette Z06 2023 is is one of the best fucking cars you can get right now, but you can't fucking get it because of shit happening. To my amazement, this car had actually slowed to a stop honking as it did. One of those creepy, those cheery, ridiculous musical horns. Oh, thank you. Finally! Stopped leaning on my knees to catch breath, the driver reached out, rolled over the window, revealing themselves as a sweet looking old lady with bottle thick glasses perched on her nose. Hello, dear. How can I help you? Why does that sound like L? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to the city. Could I, could I maybe have a ride? I promise I'm not sick. I, I. I can't believe I was saying this, but even though I didn't know I could have caught the virus from Mallory easily, I could be a carrier, I could spread it, I could. Goodness me, I'm not worried about that. Climb in, dear. Wait, it's old lady Mio. Oh my fucking god. Old lady Mio. Really flooded me. I'm into the car which smelled like toffee and diddy. <laughs> Well, at least we know what all the lady Beatles is going to be. What the hell is Toffee, actually, by the way? Toffee. Caramelizing sugar or molasses? What the fuck? <gasps> Mio streaming. Mio! 
That's where everyone's fucking going. No one wants this. Well, it's probably almost time for me to end the stream anyway. She was leading her floral dressing board over her steering wheel, and we carried it down on down so the highway. Tell me, dear, what's got a nice young thing like you in such a tizzy? Uh, we're gonna move to the stream a little later. I just want to finish this ending, see where the hell this goes, and then see what happens with this. And then we're gonna write Mio because, well, why the fuck not? It is what it is, you know. I'm not gonna sit here and bitch and play blah blah blah. 6.9k chain of points? Go oh my fucking. I passed that and you even pointed out that I had 6.9k view points. Queen as sick. Wait, when is she. What's the stream title? Drawing the Queen as a waifu and other stuff. Well. It's. It's my friend. She's in the city and she's. She's sick. I need to get to her. I just... I just can't lose her to this damn virus. Oh, well, it's not a virus. You know that, don't you, dear? Oh, she's drawing the Queen of England. I looked at her confused. Sorry? It's not a virus. It's an allergy. <laughs> oh my god, old lady Mio is the best. It's an allergy? Does a sharply dressed bear poop in the woods? Yes, it's an allergy. Sure as the earth is flat. <laughs> old lady Mio. <laughs> the what? Wait, you think the earth is flat? Getting flatter every day, dear. Oh my god. I myself have quite a rash from all the flattening. I stared at the road straight ahead. Okay, just ignore her. In a few more minutes, you're in the city, that's what's important. And speaking of, dear, do you know what rhymes with flat earth? Cat earth. That's right. The cats have known all along. Old Lady Mio sounds like the best person in the world, but the worst at the same time. Good point. You can just drop me off near the hospital and I'll go from there. We're getting close, right? Heavens to Betsy. You don't expect me to drive on the main roads, do you? Why not? She looked appalled and that I would even ask such a question and I was getting frustrated. You realize we're on a main road now, right? What? We got this fucking ending. Old Lady Mio. Get an impact me or add. Alright. The old lady gas slammed the brakes and spinning the steering wheel left towards the trees. I shouted suddenly we were careening across the shallow ditch into the woods and the old woman kept jerking. We all back and forth and soon as she pressed the pedal closer to the metal. Stop! Stop! Yep, there we go, we're, we're dead. Straight up. We hit a, something hard, I felt battled through screaming beneath the car, then seconds later it came crunching impact of a crash. Terrifying slow motion, I saw the hood and the windshield buckle and crumple towards me. Then there's only a darkness and broken glass, sputtering sound of that ridiculous musical horn going off again. What a stupid way to go, I thought. Fucking old lady Mio. So let's see, we're missing one more ending. Possibly two. Now we're missing several the gallery.
I don't know what else to do, actually. But fuck it, I'm gonna go fucking raid. Because I got nothing better to do. Let's see, where's the button? Raid channel. Uh... Neo. Start raid. Alright, goodbye chat. Alright, go have fun in Mio stream. I will see you in tomorrow stream to try to get 100% in this game because it seems like we're going to get close and I think we're going to be able to do it. But until next time, have fun.